Hi, this is Monk from Uber Rock Television. We're backstage in the um, limelight. Uh, we're actually in the Rock Garden Bar, very privileged, and it's weird to be in here when it's a bit quiet. And uh, sitting beside me, uh, returning to Ireland, Northern Ireland, after quite a little while, with a brand new project, I'm uh, pleased to say, Mike Portnoy. Hello, how are you? You're healed as one of, a lot of people use the term best, and you don't like it, one of people's favourite drummers. How does that feel? <clears throat> after all these years? I prefer the word favourite, I don't think there's such a thing as best drummer, anytime I see these polls or whatever, um, it's flattering to be winning them and everything, but you know, music isn't a, a sport or competition, um, so I prefer the word favourite, you know, it's nice if somebody says that you're the, their favourite drummer, okay, that's, that's okay, because it's subjective, but in any case, it's... It's flattering. I don't think I'm the best. I know I'm not the best, but it's nice to be a favorite. Who's your favorite drummer? Uh, I, I don't have one. I have several. I mean, some of my heroes are John Bonham, Keith Moon, Neil Peart, uh, Ringo Starr, Terry Bozio, Bill Bruford. You know, uh, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. We're here, of course, because you're here with your new project, Zones of Apollo. We've got this wonderful album out. Um, there's an expectation with a project as such as this, especially with your pedigree and the pedigree of everybody involved. And it's probably about a hundred years worth of history in there, but yeah. everybody together. Do you think you've lived up to that expectation with this, both personally and on a, on a professional level, and in terms of what you've delivered to the fans? Well, I think musically, yeah. I think what we've done with this album and now doing on tour on stage is, I mean, we, we're delivering. I think we're giving the fans what they would expect out of this lineup. I mean, this is an amazing group of guys. Each each of the five of us have such a long personal, you know, individual history, but uh, even collective histories. Me and Derek were in Dream Theater together, and me and Billy are in the Winery Dogs together. Uh, it's great to be working with Bumblefoot and Jeff. Um, so, yeah, I think it's absolutely meeting the expectations. Anybody that comes to one of the shows, they're just, you know, no matter who you're watching, you're, you're entertained. You've described it as that five-headed base. Does everybody contribute to the, the songwriting process? Um, more or less. Um, the way we made this album, when we made this album, it was really mine and Derek's band and project, and we put it together, we produced the album. So it started with me, Derek, and Bumblefoot writing the music. Uh, pretty much 80% of the music was me, Derek, and Bumblefoot. And then Billy joined us towards the end of the process for a couple of songs. <clears throat> and then... Jeff joined us for, uh, to, to add the lyrics and the vocals, and he worked with me and Derek on that. So uh, it was collaborative in that sense. Everybody contributed bits and pieces, some more than others. But what started as pretty much mine and Derek's project, now that we're on the road, it's really blossoming into a real, you know, five way, equal way, mem you know, five equal member band. Spring Belt is a return to your more your your pro roots, but. When I listen to it, and the more I listen to it, there's a very organic feel to this album. Yeah. It was a lot of it jammed out. Um, there's that sort of feel that you just, you're well, playing off each other a lot. All the music was written that way. Like I said, me, Derek, and Bumblefoot just jamming and putting it together. Uh, but it's definitely a live band. I think most prog bands uh, are very technical and mechanical and you see them live and they're kind of just in their own worlds and they're, they look like scientists. This is this band is a freaking live band that tears your head off. You know, you have a you have a keyboard player that plays like a guitar player. You have a bass player that plays like a guitar player. I mean, you it's just a live energy, and I think there's as much inspiration from the hard rock world. You know, bands like Van Halen and Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin. I think that's just as big of a part of the sound as the prog elements. You say you were you were here on your first UK shows. Uh, with this uh, project to support to, to promote this wonderful album, kicked off at Ramblin' Man Fair. You then played Motherwell of all places last night. It's a very short run of dates for well for you. You you said before a long longest run because you're used to sort of flying in, do a game and flying out again. Well, usually with all the other bands I play with, usually when I come to the UK, um, we'll just do London and maybe Manchester. You know, this is pretty thorough to be able to come up to Ireland and Northern Ireland and Scotland and uh, I think we have a date in Wales later in the year so it's this is for me a pretty thorough run of this part of the world 
more more than usual. I mean, playing Motherwell last night, you know, uh, all five of us in this band have been touring for 25, 30, 35 years each. None of us had ever played Motherwell. It was the first time for all five of us last night. So it's nice at this point in our careers, you know, we're all in our 50s and 60s and we've been doing this for a long time. It's nice when you could hit a place for a first time still. Yeah, and bring your music to new audiences. Yeah. I mean, you said you've been in the business for so long. Well, I think a lot of young kids to, to the music as well. Yeah, there's a lot of young kids at the shows, absolutely. Um, I think because we all have different backgrounds, you know, maybe because I was with Avenged Sevenfold for a little while and made a lot of new young fans from that, uh, or, or maybe Bumblefoot through Guns N' Roses. So um, you're seeing a mixture of everything from six-year-old kids to, you know, 60-year-old men. So it's a nice... Uh, you know, a nice broad audience. So, yeah, we've mentioned to come back later in the year. So, okay, the sort of the rest of the summer is going to be touring and, and promotion. What's What's next for for Sons of Apollo? Is there going to be a follow up album? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we don't have de definitive dates carved in yet, but I mean, we're absolutely going to do a follow up as soon as we can. Uh, right now, we're just focusing on you know all the dates we have ahead of us and. Uh, we're going to be back here in September and October, so that's you know that's the focus now. But once we get over that, then we'll uh, start work on another album. And anything else for you on the horizon? Because you never seem to stop working. You're in so many different bands. I'm in uh, six bands at the moment. So the other things I have in the pipeline, I have a new Metal Allegiance album that comes out in September. That's my band with Alex Skolnick from Testament and David Ellison from Megadeth, and um, we have. John Bush singing on it and Bobby Blitz and all these great, great guests. But anyway, that comes out in September. We're going to do some shows in South America for that. And um, and then I'm also going to be working on a new album with the Neil Morse Band. Uh, and that'll be out probably at the beginning of next year. And also working on a new Flying Colors album. So that's, other than Sons of Apollo, all the other things that are in the pipeline. <laughs> Do you ever find yourself trying to remember what you're actually supposed to be playing that you're in so many of these different bands? I'm used to it. I've been, there's been situations in the last couple of years where I've actually done gigs, you know, with three different bands over three days. Like literally going from the Winery Dogs to Twisted Sister to Neil Morse, like in one weekend. Uh, I'm used to it. This is what I do, you know. The life of a rock and roll star. Huh? Yeah, if you ask me to like change a light bulb, now that would be difficult. That's, that's hard. That's the one you ask the kids to do. Exactly. Yeah, my kids won't do it. on your iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, it's been a pleasure to welcome you back to Belfast. You. I, you know, you say welcome back. I don't know if I've ever been here, to be honest. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'd have to look at my, uh, my tour well, well, welcome you back to the island of Ireland. Yeah. It's nice to be back here because the last time I played Ireland was with Avenge back in 2010. So it's been a while. And um, Billy, of course, is Irish connections is through his uh, grandparents, yeah. so uh, he must be delighted to be back over here yeah, as well. I was late here with mm -hmm. Mr. Bacon and so on in the past. So. Yeah. Well, we're really looking forward to the night show, and you'll read all about it on uh, Albert Rock, where you can also watch it. And underneath, we'll push the, uh, the dates <coughs> for the return later in the year of Sons of Apollo. In the meantime, listen to the album. You will find it worth your while. This is Mark from Uber Rock. Over and out. Keep it right and keep it between the hedges.